All right, Calcularians. I'm here to tell you what calculus is. And to do so, I'm gonna borrow our problem from the sunflower packet. Boom, sunflower. Problem number two. I wanna walk through each of these questions with you. Uh, you have the answers, but I also thought a little discussion might be helpful. So here is calculus. We have the Sarah Fisher Fund on any given day. So that's S of X. And the graph here is S prime of X. So S prime of X is representing the rate of change of the Sarah Fisher Fund on any given day. So if, let's just take a second to answer letter A to figure out the units of S prime of X, S of X is the function where the Sarah Fisher Fund is on the Y axis, which will be in dollars and lots of them versus days. So if I think about S prime of X is gonna be found by doing my change in Y over change in X, because it's the slope of the tangent line, my change in Y is dollars, my change in X is days. So S prime of X is gonna be dollars per day. Now on the graph, I just kind of guesstimated that this x-intercept is seven, and I think it's kind of marked on the graph that this is 21. So if you said this was eight or seven, um, that's fine, but just for our purposes to answer the rest of these questions, just please make note, make note that I'm letting s prime of x be zero on seven and 21. So let's talk about that. Um, s prime of seven is zero, S prime of 21 is zero. So on the seventh day and the 21st day, my rate of change is zero. So the Sarah, fund, Sarah Fisher Fund is not changing on those two days. Now from day zero to day seven, the Sarah Fisher Fund is very happy. Why is it happy? Well, S prime of X is positive, And if S prime of X is positive, that means S of X is increasing. So the Sarah Fisher Fund is increasing. So given that, what other days is Sarah Fisher very happy? Well, I'm gonna be really happy on these days after the 21st day when S prime of X is positive and the Sarah Fisher Fund is increasing again. S prime of X here is positive. So the Sarah Fisher Fund is increasing, meaning I'm very happy. Where am I sad? Well, from the 7th to the 21st day, I took a dip. Here, the derivative, S prime of X is negative, and if S prime of X is negative, that means the Sarah Fisher Fund is decreasing. So Sarah Fisher Fund did not do well from the 7th day to the 21st day. Super bummer. All right. Let's address some of the other questions on the sunflower sheet. Letter B, S prime of 14, and here I'm gonna move this up a little bit. S prime of 14, the rate of change on the 14th day is negative 144.83. All right, so that makes sense, right? So the 14th day is somewhere like right around here. It's a negative value. What is happening to the Sarah Fisher Fund on the 14th day? Well, if S prime is negative, S prime of X is negative, boo. That means the Sarah Fisher Fund is decreasing. And no one's happy, right? Right. Okay, for C, S of zero. So the Sarah Fisher Fund at zero time was 3,500 bucks. A great start. So, and on that zero day, I am changing at a rate of $463.33. So if I start at $3,500 and I'm changing my $463.33, so this means on the zero time, I am making, in this instance, $463.33 per day, right? Tying in that slope. I'm making $463.33 a day. So that means on the first day, I'm gonna take what I had before, and I'm gonna add that 463.33, .33, 
and I'm crushing it. Add those things up. $3,963.33. Boom. Happy Sarah, happy students. And then getting to letter D, are there days in which the Sarah Fisher Fund does not change? Well, where is the Sarah, where is the rate of change not changing? Where is it zero? Boom and boom. So the seven and the 21st day, the rate of change is zero, meaning the Sarah Fisher Fund is not changing. Then finally, letter E, during which time, or during the time in which the data was collected, the Sarah Fisher Fund hit a relative minimum. Determine which day was the relative minimum. Okay, so let's work backwards here. If the derivative is zero at these points, that means there's a hump or a bump happening at these points. Points. So there's a hump and a bump, right? Like when we go backwards, um, let's go back to this graph. When I did my graphing, so the green function is f of x, the pink function is f prime. When I'm graphing f prime, I always take my original function, wherever there's a hump or a bump, I put a zero. So we have to acknowledge that those zeros are gonna be either maximums or minimums, right? So notice, here's an example where I have a maximum. Here are two examples where I have relative minimums. So I'm trying to find the relative minimums. So it's either gonna be graphically this zero or this zero. What's happening at both these derivatives? at these zeros, I'm going like this, right? I'm going from negative to positive, negative to positive, decreasing to increasing. Same thing here, negative to positive, negative below to positive above, decreasing to increasing. That creates a relative min. So the derivative, again, focusing on the pink graph, we know these are relative mins right? On our function, what does the derivative look like? Negative to positive, negative to positive. So looking at the Sarah Fisher fund graph, where am I going from negative to positive? The 21st day. So S of 21 is a relative min because s prime of x goes from negative to positive. And if it's going from negative to positive, that means s of x is going decreasing to increasing. So decreasing to increasing. Ah, that definitely looks like a relative min. Calculus. Boom. Take care of yourselves. Keep watching some videos. Keep asking questions. Keep it real.